Hi, I'm Denise Panzers, Diabetes and Holistic Lifestyle Coach. Now, diabetes can be a very misunderstood disease, so let's dispel these misunderstandings and we'll start with today's diabetes session. Today's lesson is the basics of diabetes, understanding the different types. Let's start with type 1 diabetes. It typically occurs in children and young adults, although it can appear at any age. Now, in most people with type 1 diabetes, the body's immune system, which normally fights infection, actually attacks and destroys the cells in the pancreas that make your insulin. So as a result of this attack, your pancreas stops making that insulin. Now, without insulin, Glucose cannot get into your cells and your blood glucose rises above a normal range. So people with type 1 diabetes need to take the insulin every day to be able to stay alive. It is a life-saving drug. Now type 2 diabetes, that affects about 95% of the diabetes uh, patient population. But let's first discuss what happens with a person that does not have diabetes. So if we look to the right side of this diagram, after eating a meal, your blood glucose increases. So your pancreas produces insulin, which is a hormone, and it signals to your cells to take in that sugar or glucose, which then helps to bring your blood glucose levels down into a normal range. In type 2 diabetes, our cells become desensitized to that insulin. So glucose actually does not get moved into your cells, and therefore it does not bring your blood glucose levels down to a normal range. This is what we call, it used to be called actually, adult onset diabetes. It's a, a lifestyle type of chronic disease. And if you've ever heard anyone that is a type 1 diabetic, and I'll look through different uh, social media groups, there is a, of, um, a, a conflict sometimes between type 1 and type 2 diabetes patients. So the type 1 community sometimes feels that type 2 diabetics should have some control over their lifestyle to help reverse the effects of this disease. So if you've ever heard of any of that conflict, yeah, it does exist. And you know, in a way, I can definitely uh, understand how a type 1 diabetic might feel. So if you want to have control in type 2 diabetes many times, you actually do have some of that control. Now, there are roughly 50% of type 2 diabetes patients who will eventually end up on insulin, making you insulin dependent. In the beginning, it's typically because of poorly managed diabetes that you're getting prescribed this insulin. So some people will start with a single shot of insulin per day at bedtime or in the morning, and that insulin lasts roughly 24 hours. Others may also require insulin shots with every meal. So this does not mean that you are now a type 1 diabetes patient. You are still a type 2. Can you absolutely improve and reduce or eliminate insulin? Yes, it does and it can happen. Outcomes are different for everyone. Have you ever heard of type 3 diabetes? Well, it's associated to Alzheimer's disease. So type 3 diabetes occurs when neurons in the brain become unable to respond to insulin. And that's used and is very essential for basic tasks, like including your memory or learning. So some researchers do believe that insulin deficiency is central to that cognitive decline uh, found in Alzheimer's disease. Now I know Mayo Clinic uh, 
had actually participated in a multi-institution clinical study, and they were testing whether a new insulin, which is a nasal spray, can improve Alzheimer's symptoms. So we're still waiting for the results of that study. Latent autoimmune diabetes in adults, or the acronym LADA, L-A-D-A, also known as type one and a half diabetes. Well, it's a hereditary autoimmune disorder which has the characteristics of both type 1 and type 2 diabetes. So initially, when patients are diagnosed, they're typically producing their own insulin and then prescribed diabetes medication, just like any other typical type 2 diabetic. However, uh, the beta cells in the pancreas fail to produce insulin over time which can actually be many, many years of that happening. Now, when that does eventually happen, or I should say if it does, the patient then becomes insulin dependent, eating, uh, needing those insulin shots. So many folks are really misdiagnosed, but testing for islet cell autoantibodies can actually help patients be aware years in advance and be better prepared. Now, these would be folks where type 1 has already been found uh, as a genetic link, uh, or other folks with type 2 that became insulin dependent. We need to see, is it because of the hereditary autoimmune disorder, or is it due to poor management of diabetes? Now, just because a person has these autoantibodies does not mean it's an absolute that a patient will require insulin. You know, lifestyle can have a huge impact on helping to preserve the pancreas uh, indefinitely or at least for a longer period of time. Well, I was diagnosed in my mid-40s with type 2 diabetes and prescribed four daily insulin shots along with a lot of medication. I was able to reduce my glucose because I followed the protocol that was given to me but there was still something wrong. I didn't feel great. I didn't feel like I healed from diabetes, and that's because I didn't until I continued to educate myself and then make the necessary lifestyle changes. Now that was when I was able to eliminate all of my insulin and medication, and that's when I actually returned down to a normal A1C level. Most of all, I just felt so much better. Looking for more diabetes information? ReverseMyDiabetes.net and book a complimentary consultation today.